A very good morning to all of you. This is a video presentation for the eConsense 2020 organized by BB College Ascensor. The title of this video presentation goes like, we live in a cloud of these tiny infectious particles. This is about viruses and their relationship with human beings. Historically, we find a very close relation of human being with viruses and human population has been infected by viruses many a time in, his, in the history. This is a famous litany uh, written by Thomas Nash in which he is praying God that, O oh Lord, have mercy on us, save us from the curse of plague. This is a 15th century poem, a uh, contemporary of Shakespeare. Here is the hieroglyph uh, about 3700 BC old, which uh, shows the polyomyelitis to, uh, in a priest uh, called Ruma. It has been shown in this uh, hieroglyph over here that during that period also polyomyelitis was predominant. Rabies was, was probably predominant because in, in 1200 BC, Epic Homer uh, has written a, a character, he has chose, chosen a character called Hector, who has been shown as a rabid patient. So historically, there are many evidences this virus is in human being, virus is infected human being uh, many times. Uh, Dmitry Ivanovsky, who is known as the father of virology, who actually discovered viruses in 1892, not very long back, because before that we knew about bacteria only. Viruses, uh, about viruses, what are viruses? They are so tiny particles that it was not uh, possible to visualize them under the microscope at that time. Uh, but uh, they realized that something smaller than bacteria are there, who, which are causing diseases. He discovered the tobacco mosaic virus, and the Martinez Bezering also worked on that, and he called these viruses as contagium vibum fluidum, a contagious fluid-like material. Twart and D. Harrell, they are known to discover bacteriophages, which are viruses that can eat bacteria. Wendell Stanley in 1935 crystallized these viruses, TMV as well as the bacteriophages, and then they could be visualized under the electron microscope. Because the electron microscope were discovered in 1931 by Nolan Ruska, so it was not possible to see them uh, before 1931. Relative size of viruses are quite small. They can be as small as 27 nanometer and can be as big as 800 nanometer, the mimi viruses. But they are very, very small compared to the bacteria. Uh, which are about 1 to 5 micrometer or 1 micrometer, the common bacteria, the E. coli and the coccus, and the RBC cell, which are about 7.5 micrometer diameter. So, viruses and human relationship, let us talk about that, that when at the beginning of human population, when the human population density was quite low during the Neolithic age and the Old Stone Age, or during the Old Stone Age, when the human population was quite low, and hunter Gatherer's lifestyle was there, then the viruses that existed in human population were the papilloma virus, herpes virus, hepatitis C virus, retrovirus. These viruses has a long persistence of persistence of infection in human body, and they could only survive because the human density was uh, very sparse, and it was uh, not possible for a virus to infect um, to transmit it uh, human to human. Uh, at a very high rate. So, uh, th those viruses could only survive which were very persistent. Later on, when the human population has had a boom from agricultural uh, lifestyle to industrial lifestyle, and then during this period when the population had an explosion, then viruses like influenza, measles, smallpox, dengue, HIV, and coronavirus, they become predominant. There are particles smaller than viruses even. Viruses are made of nucleic acids and proteins. So they are basically nucleocapsids, but sometimes they are surrounded by lipid uh, by layer and envelope like the coronavirus. But there are smaller particles called viroids which are made only of RNA and they usually infect plants. There are protein, proteinaceous infectious particles called prions. They are made only of proteins. Prions cause diseases like Kuru disease, night cow disease, um, bovine spongiform encephalopathy, transmissible spongiform encephalopathy, these kind of diseases are caused by prions, which are very, very dangerous diseases. But viruses are not always bad. There are some friendly viruses, like this thermal resistant virus, which lives in a fungi called uh, Carpularia proteoborata. This sites in the roots of this plant called Dicanthelium leniginosum, leniginosum. Because of this fungi, this plant can grow at high temperature, about 55 degrees centigrade and more. If this fungi does not inhabit, this plant cannot grow at that temperature. And this fungi will not be able to infect if these viruses are not present in the fungi. So it is a tripartite relationship, a symbiotic relationship. These uh, parasitoid wasps, they can lay their eggs and the lay eggs can develop into a mature larvae 
because of the viruses that, that they carry, the polydna virus, which helps, uh, which inhibits the the inhibitory role of the the host cell. The host cell of the larvae actually secretes a coat around this hex, and it, it blocks the development of hex into, into mature uh, larvae. What polydna viruses do? They inhibit uh, in rather the formation of those coats. By that mechanism, they help the uh, egg to develop into larvae and then mature, mature uh, wasps. That's all about this uh, video presentation.